before we get yeah, going? I, just, I have a question about uh, the um, the notes. Okay. That we ha where do we upload those? Okay. Because I have my week well, one notes. I just don't know where to upload them. Yep. Yeah, let me just – I'll share my screen so you can see where everything is. Okay. Uh, so – ooh, nugget. So in Classroom, notice right here where it says post lecture notes? Yep. That's where, right you, put, that's where you do it. <laughs> oh, wow. I didn't even see that. Thank you. Or And in the week one, the other way, if you're like, oh, do you know where it was? If in the weekly work, when you're in chapter one, if you scroll down, it says uh, somewhere, chapter one lecture, read chapter one. Um, that's the video. Oh, yeah, that, that brings you right to also where you can post the notes. Right, so perfect. it says chapter one lecture, chapter two, like you just post the notes in there, um, and you'll be able to find it. Right, so, perfect. Thank you. No problem. Um, so I saw you did cha uh, unit one fine, so I'm going to assume you're you're good on that. I'm yeah, I'm all set with that. All right. Um, so we do like one chapter, like in the week – in the 15 week semester, we do one chapter a week. We have to do two chapters a week because we only have eight weeks. So uh, let me get everything up and going. Um, the video, like the classroom, isn't required for you to show up to, but it's the only place you're going to see how to use the calculator. So it's probably not a bad thing. <laughs> and I have my dinner here because, like, I I'd ordered, I got that before, and then it took forever to get from uh, to Methuen this, this afternoon. So just as I got home, I gave Chris food and my mother-in-law called, so I had to like run out of here. And I was like, ah, I didn't get to eat. <laughs> yeah, so, that, that's yeah. always a problem, but at least you can do it now. Right. So if I eat in front of you, just you know, um, I'm you know, don't you know, don't be judging. Yeah, you no worries. Um, let me just see anybody else here. Is it? Oh, there's somebody else here. Uh, oh, good, Michelle, you're back. Yes. I, you, I I just got I just got here just turned on so thank you for coming back I appreciate okay. it thank you for understanding because yes like, <laughs> I was, well my wife's been telling my mother-in-law to um get this car you know sell her car for like five years now and like she doesn't do it so it takes her forever so now maybe she'll have to sell her car and get a new one all right so uh, chapter two is about um, Central tendencies, so mean, median, and mode, standard deviation, um, histograms, box plots, stem and leaf plots. There's lots of stuff in this, so it's actually you know fairly dense. It's one of like the more dense chapters. Um, it's not necessarily the most important chapter um, because you're all the work is going to be done on the calculator. I'm not even going to show you how to do it by hand because I usually do that, but I'm trying to um, make up time. Um, so like we don't bother doing any of this stuff by hand. Uh, we let the calculator find all the stuff for us. So uh, that's one of the things. The other thing that you're gonna they're gonna talk about in this uh, unit is um, the Z just the Z formula. And I'm doing this with the mouse. So all right. So um, this formula will change as we get along in the like around chapter seven. We'll see it again in chapter six, and then it'll change in chapter seven, and then again in chapter uh, 10? 10, I think. Um, but it's the same formula. And what it does is they're just trying to standardize stuff because when we're doing statistics, we're trying to compare populations, compare samples, compare things. And they aren't the same, which is kind of like why last week when I talked about um, relative frequencies, I want to be able to compare stuff. And if they're not the same samples, same size, I can't compare them and go, oh, gee, I have, you know, 15 out of 20 people said yes on th in this class and 17 out of 40 said yes out of this class. Well, 17 is bigger than 15, so more people said yes. But technically, more, less people said yes because it's a smaller portion. Same thing happens here. We're looking to find uh, means of things that with standard deviations, and they're going to talk about them being normally distributed. And um, 
So that just means it's a bell curve and that we have, you know, so much in the middle and, you know, the standard deviations along the sides. And so they have the 68, 95, 99.7 rule, which says that 68% of all data on a normal distribution is within one standard deviation. 95% is within two standard deviations. And 99.7 is within three standard deviations. So that means three on either side, plus or minus three. Um, and so that's if something is normally distributed. And then there's this other one um, that talks about any distribution and how like um, within four standard deviations of any distribution, 95% of the data lives, lives in that. Um, we don't care about that one. Uh, but we do care about the normal distribution and the empirical rule. Um, because it's used a lot and we talk about it with the two standard deviations, but it allows us to compare different proportion, different uh, distributions uh, in different populations and say, okay, well, we've standardized them. Now we can see how far away things are. And that's what this first question is about, is using the formula to find out how many standard deviations away something is. So we just plug it in. And we say, okay, well, well, I'm just gonna do the first one here where we have a piano has a mean co uh, cost $4,000, but the mean is 4,500 and the standard deviation is 2,000. So if I wanna see how many standard deviations this is, it's 4,000 minus 4,500 over 2,000. So in your calculator, do not type it in like that because calculators are order of operations and I get 4,000 minus 4,500 divided by 2,000. And if I do that, I'm gonna get this. And you're like, well, that doesn't make any sense uh, because it wants to do that subtraction first. So you gotta remember the parentheses. And so now I get, oh, that makes a lot more sense, negative 0.25 standard deviations away from the mean. And so what we've done is we've taken this down and because the normal standard deviation, this is um, the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. And so that's what this does. This normalizes it, standardizes it down so we can compare them all in this format. And these all standard, all these standard deviations have um, tables that we could look at and find probabilities of all this stuff. So that's why we do it. But that's what they've done here. They said, okay, well, they calculated and said, all right, well, this is negative 2.5. Well, that means that's 2.25 standard deviations below because negative is just a direction. Positive is above, negative is below the mean, all right? And I hate the fact that they use the word average here because like I said in the chapter, they talk about well, the fact that average could be anything. Uh, there's three different types of averages, so don't use the word average and then what do they do use the word average so i'm gonna grab hmm. feel much better now all right um then they want to do that for each of the three items and then we compare them so now that they've been standardized we can look to see which one is the the best deal of the three things we bought because we've standardized their prices. We found out how many standard deviations above or below the mean they are. So the cheapest one has the lowest standard deviation and the most expensive one has the highest standard deviation. And that's the idea that's in problem one. Um, problem two is a stem and leaf chart. And what we do with a stem and leaf chart is we try to make it so that we can take big numbers and just compare them and we can make really what looks like a histogram when it's done because if you turn this thing on its side there's a single block and there's nothing and then there's four blocks and four blocks and one block and so you can kind of see what the graph looks like but you can keep the numbers now the reason this isn't useful for most things and most things we usually use a histogram for but um, it is nice to actually see the values so that's why it's done, especially if we have, um, um, I've only seen it done really well one time and it was on um, states and I think 
gas prices or something like or gas production or something gas usage and it actually made sense because you could actually see where all the states fell in that and how much the things were because that was it was actually used you guys actually helpful but um most times it's not really you know the best way to go about it and so it's really not done all that much because we don't really care about seeing all the data usually we're fine with seeing a histogram of it and getting an app an, an approximated data or if we have all the data we just plug it into a calculator and do something with it now the big thing that's going to make sure that you have to do to get this right if there's nothing you have to type the word none you can't leave it blank so if i say zero and this says separated by a space so if you separate it by a comma it's going to be wrong uh, six comma seven comma nine comma nine comma two comma three comma five and nine I submit that so it marks so those wrong because of the fact that I put commas in and it marked this one wrong because I didn't put anything in it so you have to make sure and don't leave them with it you know make it's because it says spaces you have to make sure there's spaces so now when I submit it now and look at it it's gonna mark that one right if I took the spaces out It's going to, oh, that was weirdly, it's fine with that. And N O N E. So it's fine with lowercase. Uh, weirdly, while it says spaces, and I didn't put the spaces in, it was fine with that. Um, but commas, periods, uh, like a lot of things that we use, like it needs to have, like, this is one of the few places where it's important. Um, like I said last week with fractions, it didn't care if it was fractions or decimals. But it does care when it's a percent. Here, uh, there are things like formatting things it cares about. That's kind of all it is because it's a computer. They have only have so many things punched in as this is how we accept it, and so um, that's what they do. Um, the next question talks about outliers, and outliers are items that are far away from the mean, that are far away from the, the middle that affect the mean. <laughs> that means they're either too low or too high. And if you watch the video, I always talk about Michael Jordan when he graduated from uh, UNC because his degree, they would actually put in that the average starting salary was $500,000 uh, because he was making $5 million and everybody else was making peanuts. So, but it started, it caused people to go and apply to UNC in that, you know, field of study. So they got a lot of people to apply for it. And so that it worked. It was an advertising campaign. It was wasn't a lie it just wasn't the complete and honest truth uh it there was there's better truths that that could have been used so um they were lying with the facts which is kind of a thing that people do when they have statistics because you can take whatever statistics you want and model them any way you need to so in this case here they ask about outliers and they talk here it says iqr well the iqr is the interquartile range. So to get that, we have to put this data in. We have to get data. So to put data into your calculator, you do stat. I have a question. Yes. Is that the free calculator that you have on um, on Blackboard? Um, the ones? I don't know. It might be. Um, they they took it. They like it. It's weird. It broke for a while. Uh, let me see if I put it back, if it's back in there. Um, I tried to download the app for iPhone and it wouldn't, nothing came up. Um, this, the 89 and one statistics calculator is the one that I've seen on iPhone. I, I think it's now 90 something on one because I don't have an iPhone. I can't get to, I, I can't get to the iStore and I don't ever want to. Um, yeah, that but one's I, not right. I couldn't find it. I couldn't find that on the. Yeah, no, I know, I know this one's gone. They've updated it with something else, and I think it's like ninety-three and one now, or something like that, um, which is, and I think it's like eight bucks. 
So they they added a couple of things and charged seven dollars seven dollars more for it. Um, uh, and I've had people look up ones that are there. Yeah, this is the Wabbit emulator, um, but it's not there anymore. Um, so I probably should get rid of it because it this they they no longer have for the Android, but they I think they still have it for. Yeah, they still have it here, and you need this image to make it work. So this is a like just an image of the calculator, and you turn it, you you have it find that you point to it, and it just starts building the calculator. Otherwise, you just get a screen and no buttons, so you can't use it. <laughs> it's okay. kind of silly, but yeah. So this, but you it works. This works on. Um, Apple and Windows computers. Um, there is also um, this one here, NumWorks. And this will work on any computer because it's, a, it's as, as well as your, your phone because it's actually a web tool. So it actually lives on the web. And if you go to the emulator, here's the calculator. And so you just go through and I'm like, oh, I need, um, I'm doing statistics and I hit enter. And okay, and it starts bringing up stuff, and I can now type in, you know, values and and it will just put them in. So, you know, it, it does and it, it works fine. It's just you know, like, and you might want to make it bigger so you can actually see it. This here has the frequency, so I can make a frequency table if I need to. Um, so it it does some good stuff, but then I have to then go up here and then okay, and I have to go to statistics. And okay, I'm gonna hit stats and hit okay. And then this gives me all my values, my statistics, the number of data points, my minimum, my maximum, my range, my mean, my standard deviation, um, my population standard. It doesn't, don't know if it gives standard, a sample standard deviation. Oh, and then scroll down. The quartiles, the interquartile range, the values. Uh, oh, here's the sample standard deviation. So it gives you all of the stuff. So if you wanna use this, go for it. I mean, you'll have to learn pieces around it. I know where some of the stuff is because I played with it, uh, but it's still free, but they're not going to let you use it on anything else, but you can use it on your phone because it just, it's just a web page. You just look at it, make it look like a phone, like a computer, and it will work on your, on your phone for you. Um, so those are options that you have. Let me just put this in because um, I'm thinking about it right now and I will take this out because this is no longer available. And if you come across one, um, like I said, I, I like this doesn't exist anymore, and I don't have an access to the iStore. So notice it doesn't do anything for me. Um, and I can search for calculate um, uh, statistics. And I think this is one of them, but I don't know if it has um, all the stats in it. So like there's a couple here that like, here's a stats calculator, but you notice they go very slow. Um, but I don't necessarily know how good they are and how well they work. And I don't wanna like recommend one because I don't use them. So I don't wanna um, say, oh, you definitely have to try this one. You know, so um, I won't, I will, like, if it if you looked and said, oh, this has all the stuff that the um, that the Texas Instruments has, and there's a bunch of them, you know, like there's a ton of them. I just don't know which one's best. Um, I've had people go, oh, I like this one, so I'm like, okay, and this is free, so you know maybe it's good. I mean, it looks like the graphing calculator, um, but I don't, I can't, you know, say for sure because I, you know, it's like it's a tiny screenshot, like I don't know. Um, and so here it is on the iPhone and I think there's stuff in here that works well and stuff that doesn't, if I recall, I didn't have all the pieces, which has seemed weird to me, but you know, might not be a try. I mean, it's, it's, it's free. So like, it can't hurt to try it. Um, and I'll just copy that and put that into classroom. Um, let me edit this.
what's it called? Calculate 84. I'll put it just as iTunes so that you can see it's a it's a web one. Uh, let me add this other one in it. Uh, web link. Yeah. So there's tons of them out there. You know these both have so so feel free to try them. Um, and see what ones you like here. Cause like, I don't want like having to buy a hundred dollar calculator for a, a single class is insane. Um, if you're taking classes at Middlesex, they use it in every one of them. So it's not a bad thing, but you know, if you're only taking one math class, you're never going to use it again. It doesn't make sense to, to go out and buy one. Um, but yeah, so this, I do use this a lot. All right. So now getting back to, so to get in, let me clear this out. And it keeps all the stuff, which is kind of cool. Uh, so I just type in the number 79, enter. Seventy-seven, enter. Seventy-six, enter. Eighty-one, enter. Eighty-five, enter. Fifty, enter. Seventy-nine, enter. Eighty-two. Enter 83, enter 99, enter. So I put my data in to find the interquartile range. I go to stat again once I put my data in, and then calc and one variable statistics. And this asks me, well, where's my data? Well, it's in list one. I have one thing. So, okay, everything's fine. I hit calculate, and it gives me my stuff. It gives me my mean. It gives me my sample standard deviation. It gives me my population standard deviation. It gives me the count of things. It gives me my minimum, my first quartile, my median, my third quartile, and my maximum. Well, the interquartile range is the difference between Q3 and Q1. Okay, because 50% of the data is within those points. And then the interquartile range, it says 1.5 times that. So I find out what this is, which is six. Let me clear all this out. So I have 83 minus 77 is going to give me 6. And I multiply this by 1.5, which is going to give me 9. And then what it says is one and a half, this number here minus this, and this number here minus, plus this. So anything outside of that range is probably an outlier. So I just add the numbers, 83 plus 9. Gives me 92. And 77 minus 9 gives me... Oops, minus nine. That was ugly, ugly, ugly. Yeah, gives me 68. So anything smaller than 68 or bigger than 92 is an outlier. And I can go back and look at my list and go, oh, I have a 50 and I have a 99. So I have two probable outliers. And that's how I solve that thing there. And that's how this becomes the answer, is that I actually have to calculate this. But to calculate IQR, you need to know what it means. And that's just the interquartile range, which is you take the, inter the quartiles, subtract them, because that's what range means, is to subtract, and then multiply it by one and a half, because they figure anything more than that is going to be far away. So, And is a, most likely affecting the, the mean and not the median. In um, three, they have a frequency table. So we have the number of movies that people rent. And yes, people use to rent movies. Um, and how many people answered that number. 
So I have zero, there were five, and one, there was 11, and two, there was five, and three, there was three, and four, there was one. And then they asked me to look at the graph and figure out which graph makes the most sense. Well, I want to say something, please. Yeah, go right ahead. Um, question two, like, I, I thought you would be here by seven, so like I'm here seven, but you. Oh, I did. All I did. All I did was, uh, yeah, I, I, I got here a little early, so yeah. No, I'll go back to question, question two. I had just started when you got here, so um, we were just talking about it. All we did was showed how this went in, in A. So, um, did you? Have I a understand. Question? I, I understand the space and the comma that you're trying to explain. Yep. The small case of the norm. The zero, oh. I do understand that. But like on um, the calculation, like when you calculate for the interquartile range and you finally yep. come here, that would confuse me. Okay, so interquartile range is just um, the range between the quartiles. And the quartiles, there's four of them, because you know, that makes sense. Actually, there's five of them. Um, there's the minimum, which is Q0. The first one means 25% of the data is less than that. The median is Q2, which means that 50% of the data is less, less than that. Q3 is the third quartile, 75% of the data is less than that. And then the maximum is 100% of the data-ish is less than that because really the maximum is doesn't have that, but 99.9% .9 of the data is less than that. And so these are your quartiles. And so the calculator will actually find those for you. And just by putting in the, the information, these numbers here, it will give and asking you to find the stats, it will actually give you the, these numbers. And then you, you're going to use just Q1 and Q3 to find the okay. quartile range. Okay, Q, uh, Q3 minus Q1. Q3 minus Q1, exactly. Yeah, okay. And the quarter range. Then you more I I it's like I see you multiply it by one point five or that. Yes. Yep. So and when then, you subtract the answer, you multiply by one point five. That's what you mean. Correct. I multiplied by one point five, and then I took that value. And where's my? Here it is. And then I add it to the higher number and subtract it from the smaller number. Oh. And so anything outside of this range are outlier probable outliers they're not possible they're not definite outliers you say you we took have a that, small sample. um excuse me sorry yes. like you say you took the value you multiply you subtract it what you multiply by the what right the higher um so i subtracted these two numbers to get the six yeah. and then multiplied it by one and a half to get the nine yeah, yeah. and then i take that nine and i subtract it from the smaller number yeah. and add it to the larger number. Okay, okay. Where do you get the 1.5, please? Is it a that, that's just a, a number they've picked out uh, and said, we're going to use this number for, uh, for to find this. They could have okay. used two, um, but by, by standardizing, they've all decided 1.5 is the number they're, they're going to use. It's one of those things they just kind of agreed on and said, uh, this yeah, it's, is the value it's like, used. It's like a standard value, like a constant value. Right. It's just the number, it, it, it's just the number they've said, this is the number we're going to find. <laughs> okay. And you're like, okay. <laughs> okay. You just go with it. Like there's, 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 that, that's, it's the weird thing about statistics is they've just kind of picked values at random, like that are random looking numbers. And you're like, all right, <laughs> take right. that one. Matt. Like, they, they, they could have said two, <laughs> and okay. people would have been, yeah, two makes sense. Two is an easier number to multiply than one and a half. We'll yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> they just didn't. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy just yeah, to bring a lot, of, I, I, a lot of I trouble again. I can't give again. you a That's reason right. why. <laughs> <laughs> I suggest maybe it's to just to confuse with us, with the students. Well, I think because... they thought maybe two would be too big. Because they want to fall within the, you know, the, um, oops, here where we have our, um, you know, two, st one standard deviation, two standard deviations. They probably figured since these are most likely going to be our quartiles, if I multiply by two, I'm going to get really far away. Right. I'll get, you know, I'll overshoot these 
uh, standard deviations. So they're figuring we want to be kind of just outside of that. We don't want, and like we have our third standard deviation. We don't want to be outside of three standard deviations. We kind of want to be somewhere in between the two and the third. So that's probably where they came up with the idea and said, oh, well, one and a half will move that out and just enough. You know, we'll be close to this two standard deviation mark and the number will, we, we won't have include everything as not being a, a, a um, uh, an outlier because there should be outliers. There's most likely going to be an outlier every once in a while, but they probably found that two wasn't, was too big. And um, I always remember it dealing with um, standard deviations and saying that anything that's more than two standard deviations away is an outlier, is most likely an outlier. So this is just an easier way to find that if I don't have to, I don't have to calculate the standard deviation. I, they just kind of came up with a quick, easy thing that probably came close enough to that same value and said, oh, it's it's close enough. It, it's good enough. We're going to say it's a you know probable outlier and you know go on our merry way and, and nobody's going to complain. And I, that's probably yeah. all that happened. Okay. <laughs> they, they probably did it enough times to come up with a, a number and said, here's an easy number to do math with and we can use that, okay. which, which is how statistics kind of seem to work is they came up with simple numbers okay. to, to deal with. So like we have this number, which is 92 and 68. So like um, yes. you said, it's a range. A range, I'm going to use that. OK, so now with, then we look at our original numbers. And we say, oh, look, I have a 50. 50 is less than that. So it's outside of my range. Outlier. 99, it's outside of my range. Outlier. That that's all that that's all, and then we we just make a note of them. We don't take them out. We don't um, you know do anything else except notate that these are probably outliers, and we should you know be aware of them. That's it. Unless unless we look and go, oh, I typed numbers. We usually go back and then go, oh, I typed this number in wrong. It wasn't a 99. It was an 89. Now I can fix it. You know that's you know that's what you do. You you use them just to make sure that you didn't make a mistake. <laughs> okay. Because okay. like they have effects on the rest of the statistics, so you just check to make sure that they were right. That, Hi, that how do you call it? 50, 50, 99. Okay. Okay. So um uh, um what I want to know, I'm sorry, like um a bit mm -hmm. confused, like. How, how do you fill this table from five to nine down here? These boxes that I'm seeing here. Oh, the next one? In no, up, up there, up there, up there. Oh, yeah. Like this. Yep. Oh, I'm okay. This. So these are the tens digits. These are the yep. ones digits. So okay. we take the numbers here and we, we take the tens digits and, and just make sure that the ones go in there. And they have to be in order. Okay. So they have to be they have to go up in order. So when you're doing this, you're gonna get nine, seven, six, nine. And if I use this as a value, it's not gonna like it. Yeah. It's gonna say, no, that's wrong because they're not in yeah. order. So yeah. you take the values you have, you go, oh, here's the ones digits or if these were thousands, you might round to you know it to you know to ten thousands and go okay. Well, I have thousands. I'm going to round to the thousands and use that because it just allows you to keep um, numbers that you can see, um, but not necessarily all the numbers that there are. So it's not something that that's used a lot or perfectly. Um, it's just a way to kind of get a graph like this histogram. Okay. But actually, these still see the, the regular values. And that's the idea of it. It's okay. kind of a quick histogram. OK. 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 And so a histogram is just a graph of the frequencies of values. And we want to find the one that's right. Well, they're really bad at making graphs. so. You don't have to do this with the calculator. You can go, oh, number one is 11. All right. Well, that's not 11. Well, that's probably 11. OK, that's right. That looks good. This one's 11. That's not 11. So I now have two answers that are right. I can now look at the next one and go, 
All right, that's a five and that's a five. Well, those two are exactly the same. That that looks good. That's a five. That's that's not a five. So this is not right. It's real easy to uh, minimize to to get rid of wrong answers on their graphs. They're really awful at making graphs. So um, you don't really need to do any work to find them. You can. The thing is, it's going to make a graph based upon what it wants to use. And so then you have to rework it. So I'm going to show you how to do it. But we again have to clear this out. So to clear out your data, if you press up, this puts it in list one. And then you hit clear and enter. And it will get rid of all the numbers from that column, as opposed to hitting delete each time and getting rid of them. And then I do have frequencies, 5, enter, 11, enter, 5, enter, 3, enter. And my numbers are going to be different than yours because these are in red. So uh, just be aware of that, that if I have red numbers, they're different. They're put in randomly. So sometimes you'll have the same values. Sometimes you won't. There's probably like 10 or so problems with random values, and they will randomly put them in. So if you're like, oh, I didn't get that. Those don't look like my numbers. They're not. It's just they're, they put in randomly. So to make a, a histogram, we use the stat plot tool. So second, anything that's a blue on your account, or in my case, it's blue. Uh, I use the second button, and then that'll bring up the, that thing above it. Yours are, some are going to be, you know, blue and yellow. Some are yellow and orange. Like these colors on these buttons change all the time from different calculators to different calculators. Um, but this cal blue, my blue one here matches all the blue words. My green one matches all the green letters. So you can't really see the green letters because they're tiny and, and really light green. Um, but they're, trust me, they are actually there. So I want to turn a plot on. The dumbness used the first one. I hit enter to go in. Right now it's saying that it's on. So great. If it was saying it was off, this one would be blinking. And so you just highlight the on button and hit enter and it turns it on. And then you come down here and tell it what kind of graph you want. I want a histogram, which is this one. And then it asks me, where is my stuff? My values, my list of numbers are in list one. My frequencies are in list two. Yep, that's all great. Perfect. So I want to graph it. If I hit the graph button, it's going to tell me I have an error. So the reason I have an error, uh, I may have a couple of errors. Let me quit. Zoom, stat, if I want to see the graph, this is the easiest way to do it. So Because I may not be, I'm probably out of range of where the data is. So I want to hit zoom, stat. That will show me my graph. And now notice this graph here looks nothing like this graph here. And the reason is because it just set it up automatically. If I go to the window, notice it says it starts at zero, goes up to 4.66, and goes up by 0.66. Well, these go up by, start at zero, go to four, and go up by one. So I want to make sure all those things are the same. And now when I hit graph, now I have, I'm missing one, so let me go to five. And now I have all of my graphs that look exactly like this. So I can say, oh, yeah, that does look exactly like this one, where this is 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. The reason it has to go up to 5 is because it ends here. Like this is where 5 is, so it had to show 5. It was showing 4 was ending here, so that, that's where I that was having a problem with it. So we want to make sure that we have a big enough window to show all of our data when we're doing this. All right. Um, but it, so you can get it so you can do the graph so it will look just the way it's supposed to. Um, but like I said, when you use stats and the, the, the automatic things, it does, it'll graph it any way it wants. And then you have to go back and manipulate it to at least make the bottom ones make sense. Um, the next one here, well, once we put our numbers in, relative frequency, remember, this is just how many things there are divided by the total. So there were 25 people. 
So this is 5 over 25. This is 11 over 25. 5 over 25. 3 over 25. 1 over 25. And then the cumulative relative frequency, remember, is these things added up. So 5 over 25. 16 over 25. 1 over 25. 4 over 25, 25 over 25. I don't have to simplify them. That's lazy. All right, bro, could you just time that it. last part? I'm sorry. I yeah. missed it. Sure. So cumulative relative frequency just means I add up the relative frequencies. Okay, thank you. So I start with this one here. There's nothing below it, so I just take that one. Now the next one, I just add the two. And then I add the three of them, and then I add the four of them, and then I add all five. So I just keep adding the next one on to the previous values, and that's how you get them as they go along. Okay. Thank you. If you wanted to put this in decimal form, you could, because it says integers, fractions, or decimals. So if I instead wanted to put, make this point two, point two, it's fine with that. So it doesn't care one way or the other. You just have to make sure you have the numbers in, right? And it'll, it'll take both of those as values, all right? They're not asking you to do anything else with it, so that's kind of it. Um, this one here, they say they have 111 people uh, shopping for T-shirts, and they want to know how many own more than... Um, okay. How many t-shirts they have that cost more than $19? I mean, $19 is cheap now for a t-shirt. You got to remember, this book is like 15 years old. So 10 or so, you know, 10, about 15 years old. Um, yeah, probably. Just about. So $19 is nothing for a t-shirt now. Um, and now they want to find the percent of people that own at most four. Well, at most four means... four or less. So we have to add up all of the percentages, all the fractions, and then turn it into a percent. And they just want you to round it to a whole number. So I have five plus 17 plus 23 plus 39. And then I I'm add sorry, those can up. You, can you say that again? Sure. At most four means four or less. So at most is really less than or equal to. And at least is greater than or equal to, all right? And then there'll be other ones that come along more than, um, less than, um, obviously. But those are the two that might confuse people because when we think of most, well, that's the highest thing. Well, yeah, that's the highest thing. So if that's the highest thing, then everything else below at most means the highest thing and everything less than that. And at least is the lowest thing. So at least three means three or more. Right, I, I have at least. And how did you find the percent? Like, how do you get the percentage? So once I get that value, I add these pieces up. So I get my calculator on. I put out of this. So I have five plus seventeen plus twenty-three plus thirty-nine. I add those up, and because this is out of one hundred and eleven people. Divide by 111, and I get 0.756, da, 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 da. But they want to turn this into a whole number and a percent. So remember, to turn it into a percent, you have to multiply by 100. So I get 75.6, and now I have to round. And you would think rounding is easy because you've learned it in first grade, but this is where everybody makes their mistakes. <laughs> so I don't know why. I just 
like again having taught this class for 20 years you, it, it just amazes me how bad people are rounding um and it, you, you, nobody here if you're bad I, i'm not you know gonna say anything because for 20 years i've had people who go who, who can't round it, it 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 throws them off i have no idea why you know um but so because this is a 0.6 we're going to round up because it's more than five. So this is closer to 76 than it is to 75. And that's how they got that value there. Because this had rounded to the nearest whole number. But because we had a decimal, we had to first turn it into a percent, which means I had to multiply this by 100 and then round that value. Because if I rounded this, I'd get one, and that doesn't make any sense. And it's definitely not 1%. The next one talks about box plots. No, yeah, box plots. Um, and the problem with every one of these is that they look at it as if these were actual values. And box plots are in percentages. So they're made out of the five number summary, where this here is my first quartile, which means that 25% of the numbers are within this range. 50% of the numbers are between here and here. 75% of the numbers are between here and here. 50% of the numbers are between here and here. 100% of the numbers are between here and here. So each one of these lines is from the five number summary, the minimum, the first quartile, the median, the third quartile, the maximum. And they're broken into percentages, 25 percentage points each. This doesn't tell me how many people, at how many data points at all have been looked at. This one could be 10 million. This one could be 10. I don't know. There's no telling how many things there are. And each one of these talks about the fact that a number of data points. And that's why they all want to wire all of these false. And they all have the fact that there how many data values? How many data values? How many data values? These are all about data values. And because they're about data values, we know nothing. You know, the fact that because mode is that they have the same number is the highest number of data values. So all of these questions are about data values and box plots don't have anything to do with data values. They have to do with percentages. So that's why they're all wrong. <laughs> and I'm going to leave it at that. Um, and so here we can tell stuff. OK, because they ask, well, why would 13 possibly be an outlier? And we can see that 13 is really far away from whatever the 20, the, the third quartile is, whereas 13 is really close to the, whatever the third quartile is here. All right. Yes, there's still 25 percentage points, but this looks like there's a long stretch here, whereas there wasn't as much of a stretch here. So this looks like it could be an outlier just because of the fact that it's so far away from everything from the rest of the data and we can see that by just the length of the line you know we don't know what this number is we don't know what this number is there could be a ton of values in here like single values going all the way up there could be like if there were 100 things this this is 25 this is 25 this is 25 and this is 25 but there's like 25 data points and they're all like lined up individually. There's no doubles or anything. And so it might not be an outlier. And whereas again with 100, there could be 25 13s versus you know 25 values from here to here and 25 values from here to here and 25 values from here. But there's 25 13s. Again, those wouldn't be outliers because there's a ton of them at the end but they're far enough, they're very far away from the rest of it. So they seem like they would be kind of a weird grouping. Uh, maybe this is, you know, cats. How many cats do you have? And most people have, you know, very few. And then you know, they go to the whole, uh, like a crazy cat lady farm and there's like, everybody's like, ah, oh, we got like 13. So, you know, it could be a ton of people that have 13. And so therefore it's not an outlier. There could be a whole bunch of people right here, right outside of this value, and then one person with a 13, and that would make this an outlier. So because it's the length, the line is so far so long, 
that's why it looks like it's probably an outlier in the second one, even though we don't know what the data points are. And now we finally get to a little math. You know, we're at problem six and we're actually now doing some math out of nine problems. So that's nice. Again, we're going to use the frequency charts. Okay, we're going to put these values in and then these values in uh, list two. So again, stat, edit. I'm just going to clear these up. Go up, hit clear. Go up, hit clear. I don't have to. I, we will overwrite them, but and then I go into the next one. I have two and four and eight and twelve and twelve and seven. And I'm going to do this one first. So I can see things already that look wrong. These two look wrong. <laughs> this has just a steady climb all the way up. And this one has the, the highest numbers at the beginning, and I know they're at the end. So I know those two are incorrect. Now, these two graphs are exactly the same. So one of them is wrong and one of them isn't. And the reason this one is wrong is because this has frequencies as decimals. And frequencies are counts. Histograms are about counts. So we can't we can't count point one of something. Okay, we can't count point two of something. It can yes, it can be twenty percent of the total, but that's not a histogram. That's a different kind of graph. So this is not a histogram because this is based on percentages. This one's a histogram because it's based on counts. That's why it's this one here and not this one. And these two are obviously make no sense because this one's backwards and this one's just climbing up. All right, so that's those simple ones out of the way. Now, to get the rest of these things, we're going to use the stat tool. We're going to stat and calc. And again, we're going to do one variable statistics. But this time, I have a frequency list. So this is list one. And this one here is in list two. And to get list two, I have to do second two. Okay, that because the, the L2 is above the second one, which makes sense. So that's why there's six of them. And it's in blue. So I want to make sure I use the second tool and not the alpha tool, which was, is weird because it's in alpha mode, but it really wants the, the second one. So I don't know why that, that makes no sense to me. And then when I hit calculate, <laughs> and this is where people usually make mistakes. And you'll know you make a, made a mistake because I should have 45 things. I should have 40 things. I obviously made a mistake because mine N and that N are not the same. So I'm going to go back and I'll look at my data. Two, four. I think it's the seven at the end. You put seven, there's a two. Ah, that would make sense. Two. Yeah. That explains, that makes, the, makes it for five. But if you did only list one, you're going to come up with six things. So that's, again, how you know you, you made mistakes is just look to see how many things are in there. So again, to get list two, it's second list two. And then hit calculate. And I can say, okay, my 40, yep, those are right now. And so now I have accurate values. And so it's calculated the mean. You know, you could do this by hand. You can count all of them up and add them. And if you want, go right ahead. And you can calculate standard deviation. I'm not going to show you how to do it because I it's the waste of time, <laughs> giant waste of time. So I'm not going to do it. Um, I have done it in the past and it's a giant waste of time because as soon as I show people, people are like, I don't want to do that. I'm like, good, you don't have to. Here's a button on your calculator. It's going to give you these numbers. So we want the sample standard deviation because this is a randomly selected sample. So it's not everybody. It's a randomly selected students. So that tells me it's a sample. So I'm using the sample standard deviation. And they only want two decimal places, so you round to two decimal places. Right here. S of X is the sample standard deviation. Sigma of X is the population standard deviation. This is the sample mean, 3.85. I'm going to skip this for a second. Here's my quartiles. 
Q, min, uh, Q1, median, Q3. So those are given to me right there. All right, and I can find them from this table. I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. Um, but if I've done the stats, you know, I can have it and it calculates it. So I'm just going to, no, oh, great, that's easy. So those pieces are done. This I'm going to show you is real simple. Um, notice this starts at one, this starts at three, this starts at two, this starts at four. The graphs are all exactly the same. My lowest number is a one. So the only one that has a minimum of one is this one. So I don't have to know what this looks like to graph it on the calculator because they're dumb. <laughs> it, it, it saddens me how, how dumb uh, they are at making um, uh, other graphs. Like the, I realize there's no way to have you upload a picture of a graph of the graph, so they have to do this, but they should at least you know make an effort. And they don't. They never did. So I'm just going to point out the stupidity of it. This here, again, we can do as decimals or as fractions. This is 2 over 40. This is 4 over 40. This is 8 over 40, 12 over 40, 12 over 40, and 2 over 40. But the decimals are really helpful here in the cumulative relative frequency to find the quartiles. Because quartile is 25th percentile. So this number here, the, the 25th percentile means the values are 25% of the values are less than that thing. Well, this has 0.05% of the values are that or less. This is 15% are that or less. 35% are that or less. Well, 25% is less than 35%. So that's why three is a quartile, is the first quartile, because 25% is in that range between here and here. The median is 50 percentile. Well, that's bigger than this, but smaller than this. And 75th percentile is the third quartile, which is bigger than 65, but smaller than 95. So we can use the cumulative relative frequencies to find quartiles and percentiles. Because if they want to know um, the 40th percentile, I can look and see, well, where does 40 lie? 40 is bigger than 3, but smaller than 4. So the 40th value in the, in the list is there. So the 40th value, 40th percentile would be the 16th value. And if I went through and found out, okay, well, this is 2, 10, 14. Two more would be 4. So I'm going to have two 4s. The 16th value is a 4. There's 12 of them. It could be any of the 12 of them. But one of the fours is the 16th value. That's how they find that. But it's also easy to find by looking at the cumulative relative frequencies. And the same for the 90th percentile. This one here, what percent of students own at least five pairs of sneakers? I think it's sneakers. I don't even read the problems anymore. Yep, sneakers. At least five pairs of sneakers. Well, at least means they owned five pairs or six pairs. So I just add those percentages up. Just like I could find out at most three, I could, you know, would be one, two, and three. At least five means they owned five or six. And I just add those values up and, and come up with those values. So that's how they do all of those pieces. Not a lot of math. I mean, we added some numbers. We punched a bunch of stuff in. We're going to punch a bunch of stuff in in seven as well. Um, and then we're going to use that to find uh, these two here. This one is the hardest one. It's that because it's backwards, you know, and people have a hard time with algebra. So I have four and nine and negative one. Make sure when you put negative, you use the negative sign. If you're using a computer, um, you have to actually still push this button because otherwise the minus this the minus sign on your keyboard is a minus sign and it won't it'll be asking what are you subtracting from and so it like freaks out and doesn't give an answer.
Do I have my data? It asks me for my mean and my standard deviation, so I'm just going to calculate my mean and standard deviation. And now, because I don't have um, a frequency list, I'm going to delete it. So I hit the delete button, and that goes away. And then go down to calculate. And it gives me my numbers, 2.08, and my sample standard deviation of 3.7. Now, notice my, my standard deviation is bigger than my mean. Because I have values that are both positive and negative, that makes sense that you know values can you know one standard deviation would actually be below the, the below zero because I had numbers that were negative. So it you can have that. Um, what is the median change? Uh, median well, median is right here 1.5. Notice 1.5 isn't on the list, but what they did was they found that they had um, 12 things. So they took the uh, sixth and seventh values and averaged them together. And that's how they get the 1.5. Because 50% of the data is below that and 50% of the data is above that. So because it's an even number, they take the average of those two middle numbers and go, yeah, it's going to be you know, bigger than that. It's, that's going to be the 50%. It's going to cut that in half. So you take the two numbers that are in the middle. So if I were to put these in order, I would obviously get a one and a two, and I would average them out, and it would give me my um, sides. So, um, so your median doesn't have to be a number that's on the chart, and it doesn't have to be a number that's um, even a whole number. When everything else is a whole number, you, you can get a decimal because you're taking the average of those two things. The last one here asks, what is a standard deviation? What number gives a standard deviation that's 2.2 standard deviations below the mean. This means we have to do algebra. Unfortunately. We have to do some algebra. And when we're doing this, we can substitute x bar for mu and s for standard for sigma because we're using it as an estimating tool. Um, but we had 2.2 below the standard deviation, so negative 2.2 is equal to x minus. Now I have the mean, which was I'll bring this up 2.08. And I'm going to divide by um, 3.7. Yeah. Those two numbers there. That's when I got them. So now I just use algebra. So I have to solve for x. I have to go all the way back to ninth grade. You know, your braces and, and frizzy hair and all that stuff. So we have to get rid of this fraction, which means I have to multiply both sides by 3.7. So those cancel. And 3.7 times negative 2.2. I get negative 8.14. And then I add 2.8 to both sides. Those cancel out. I get x is equal to plus 2.08. I get negative 6.06. .06. I want to say something, please. And they want to round it to one decimal place. Yes. Um, I understand doing it like the way you just solve it over there. I understand it. Yep. I understand it that part more better than even here, because like me, like 
I never solve mathematics um, on computer like I used to like um, solve it the hard way, just like the way like um, you're doing it um, in the computer, yeah. like that first part. Yeah, um, because yeah. like you were explaining, like some people doesn't use to that, like when you try to solve it for them, like another way, like they will be like, oh, but like me, I used to that. That's yeah, no, um, yeah. I, the, like, even this, just, this, I, I, I try to write it out so better. people can see all the pieces. Yes, I understand this much better. So what I want to know, like, if I want to solve it, like, um, the hard way, like, how I want to solve it this way, um, how I'm going to put those answers within these um, brackets or within these spaces that I'm seeing here? So um, you mean in here? Yes. So all so you actually have to do all the math out by hand in some way. I mean, you could use a calculator to solve it, but all they want, all they want when they're finally done is this answer, this negative 6.06. But because it says to round to one decimal place, I then have to round it to one decimal place. So do all the work out and then just putting the answer in it. That's all they're looking for is just the answer. Not how you did it, but that their answer is there. So if you had um, an app that said, oh, you know, plug this in, you know, give me a picture of your, your, you know, they have ones that like you take a picture of the equation and it gives you an answer. I don't care if you do that. that, that it's fine with me, you know, you're like, I've done algebra. I'm out of algebra. I don't see algebra again. That's fine. <laughs> okay. I don't care. Okay. You know, because like, um... because all, all they're going to ask for is just this answer here. And they want it, then want it rounded to one decimal place. So yeah, because like, I don't even understand like using the calculator that you're using now. I don't have never yeah. used it. I mean, I'm just using the calculator to just do the math. That's all. Yeah. Like you can see, I just multiplied these two things and I got that value. And then if I don't no, that, plug a that's number super in, easy. That's super yeah. easy. Well, like um, the way you're solving like the statistics on the calculator, I don't understand solving statistics on calculator. Well, uh, well, it does all the math behind the, the, the scene. So like to get standard deviation, there's a big formula. Like you have to take You take your list of numbers. So, you know, I have one and three and negative two and six and five and zero and oh, negative yeah, one. Yeah. And I got the average. I then have to subtract the average off <laughs> from every one of those. Oh, then I have to square it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> then I have to exactly. add those up. Exactly. Then I get a total that I then take the square root no, of it's it's really weird but that what i used to you know right i divide by n minus one and then i take the square root of it so it's a long complicated formula to yeah. get a number that the calculator just spits out to you in a second so it makes I'm, no sense for me to teach you this because you're never going to do it by hand okay ever ever, ever, well, ever, like, ever, um, ever. why why i want to keep that by my side like Maybe I'm um, while doing it, I will be. Uh, maybe I'll get lost with your own step. I will use what I used to, you know. Yeah. As long yeah, as you'll I do never it ever ever do statistics by hand. Uh, I know. The reason is because you're dealing with, you know, doing one or two numbers and squaring it and find the averages is fine, but they're never going to give you one or two numbers. They're going to give you fifty numbers, and so you have to do it with, with wow. fifty things. You have to <laughs> like you, even doing it in a spreadsheet takes forever. Like, and yep. especially does all the yep. math for you. You just have to do a formula and calculate it through and it will do that, but it takes forever to do it. So um, like, um, and this, I just have to, um, get used to this calculator thing. Yeah. Right. You're just going to have to get used to the calculator yep. <laughs> because right. you're not going to want to do stats by like it. Stats is not a, a thing that you do by hand. It's not like a, a calculus where, yeah, you're going to do it by hand because there's lots of pieces that you have to deal with. Notice here, I have, you know, not eight numbers that I'm calculating through and then doing stuff with. You know, I'm then going to find the median, which means I have to figure out, well, where is the middle part of this? And then the quartiles, I have to find the quartiles. I mean, I can do it here with my cumulative relative frequencies, 
but if I put these into the calculator, it's just as easy, you know, and here's all the numbers that I have to put in. So okay. right here, I yeah. 84 things and every one of them's in words. <laughs> I had four conferences oh. that lasted two days, 36 lasted three days, 18 lasted four days, 19 lasted five days, four lasted six days, one lasted seven days, one lasted eight days, one lasted nine days. I had to take those words, turn them into numbers here. Now, because this is a frequency, it's much harder to calculate the mean and standard deviation by hand because I have to do it in, you know, I have to calculate the mean. I then have to figure out the problem, the proportion that's of that piece to find all the stuff. It's, it's, it's a nightmare. So I just give it in a calculator and go here, you, you do the work and I'm not, I'm going to sit back and, and wait for something to happen. Okay. All right. And again, um, this one here, we have a, a, a box plot. This one, at least they did a better job. You know, they have all of them starting with two days and ending with nine days. So that, that part's fine. But yeah. I can see that they're, this one is evenly spaced. I know that's not true because I had like 19 and 36 of them here. So I know that's not the case. You know, this year they have them all squished down here. But I know I have some that are lasting, you know, six and seven and eight days. And I can see that here by the probabilities. So I can see that, you know, my first quartile is three. So I, I, that should be my first line. Well, that's a four. That's a three. That's a two point something. That's a three. So I have, I'm down to two of them already. <laughs> yeah. And now the next one says uh, the mean is a four. So if my mean line isn't at, my median line isn't at four, that's at four. That's not. So I've already figured out the answer just by looking at thing and not constructing a, a box plot because I don't have to. I can use the tools I have here, which is my five numbers, part of my five number summary to help me find what the pieces are. This should give me my interquartile range, you know, uh, three, four, and five. So the line should be at three, four, and five. Well, that's at four, six, and seven. That's at three, five, and seven. So that's not right. This is at two point something and three and three point something. So that's not right. Three, four, and five, but done. That's my answer. I found my answer by looking at my quartiles. So, okay. but you have to do all these little pieces, find the relative frequencies, add them up to get the cumulative relative frequencies. That's going to let you find these as well as these, as well as this. And then it asks, well, the middle 50% is between three and five because that's what the middle that's what this that's what this box plot is showing us is that the middle 50 percent is in this range and then um they want us to calculate the mean and standard deviation well all right i'm going to put that in my calculator you know i'm going to put these numbers in my calculator and get the mean and standard deviation making sure that you put in when you do the mean when you do the standard deviation and stuff when you go to calc one variable statistics that you put that where your frequencies are. Those are in list two. Otherwise, you're going to get numbers that are way off from everything else. All right. You're going to make sure you put in your list. Your, your list two here is where your frequency list is. That's going to find these numbers. The mode is the number that happened the most often. So you look and go, oh, 36. That's the mode. Because <laughs> it's bigger than 18 and bigger than 19 and bigger than four. You know, so the biggest number, that, that's what mode is. And then you make some ideas. Why, how long would you make a, a, a conference? Why would you choose that? You know, um, given that, uh, give two reasons why you think that three to five days seems the popular length of engineering conferences. Well, well, all right. I mean, the mean, median, mode are in that range. Well, yeah, but that's why they're, they, they've made those numbers. Realistically, why are they in that range? Um, because we have a work week of five days. Nobody wants you sh nobody wants to go to a conference for more than a work week, because then you have to come back to work and do all the work that you missed, right? Nobody wants to go away for one day or two days because that's kind of a waste. Three days is the perfect length because usually there's something a day before and a day afterwards, and um, or they're on a Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and then you can take the weekend off, or a Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and you can take the weekend off before, you know. 
they they don't want to have too long because you're away too long from work and you have a lot of stuff to catch up on. You don't have too short because especially if it's in the middle of the week, well, then you have to go back to work afterwards. So that makes no sense. Or you're flying out. So you miss a day of work at the beginning and you're flying home. So you're missing a day of work at the end anyway, you know, so having the weekend on either side allows you to not miss a day of work on either end of that stuff. And like I said, if it's, if it's a nut, if it's right before or right after a weekend, you can stretch it out and be somewhere with your family. So people like three, four and five days. And then the last one here again, asks you to find, make a frequency chart and find the number that is 1.5 standard deviations below the mean. That's the same thing we did um, here where we had uh, the thing I just had, where we had Z is equal to X minus mu over sigma. But this here is going to be negative 1.5. And you're going to fill in this and this. And you're going to find those numbers and fill them in. Oh, I have a color. And so that's, and you're going to do the algebra. So I'm not going to do that because at least you have some stuff to do. And not bad. I did this all and still in still in an hour. So it's only 8 o'clock. So are there questions about things? Anything? Chapter 1 or Chapter 2? Um, I'm not um No, and I did remember to re re record, so that's a good thing. So you can see the little red button is there. So it's still recording. Yay! Pat myself on the back. Um, like, um, can I say you, something, you, please? Like, absolutely. Yeah, I'm not here when you when you do um, the first class because. Like, oh, on Tuesdays, um, that's fine. I'll show you where the the recordings are all. Again, right in the same thing where it says online course meetings. If you click this menu button, there's the recordings. There's last week's. Okay. So okay. This week's will go right underneath it. The next one will be right underneath it. It's just going to say recording one, recording two, recording three. It'll give you the date. And it'll tell you how long it was. So you can feel and, free to um, watch those. And the notes, the notes too, like. Um, yep. And so right here, which says post lecture notes. Yeah. Just you put them in with whatever chapter it is. Um, the only reason I like them is because I try to look at them beforehand to make sure I answer any questions. So yep, if you like, really don't, my, if you don't understand my, something, it'll yeah, do that. Problem um, is, ignore the video notes link because it doesn't work because they went yeah. bankrupt, which is too yes, bad because yes, it was awesome. Yes. Oh. Yes, exactly. Exactly. This is a problem. And I have a problem also like, uh, I didn't prepare my notes before this meeting because like uh, I only get to understand all this and so I don't know if you give me an extension. Yeah, of course I do. I, I'm, I, Kyle, how am I giving extensions? I had Kyle in high school, so. Am I good at giving extensions? Yep, I'm sorry. I, I, yeah, yep, I mean, yep. you, sell you, you sell you. You, you were always like, uh, you know, a way ahead of stuff anyway, when you were doing the, doing the work. But I, I just want you to learn the stuff. Um, I put the extent the, the time periods in there, like I said, the notes beforehand, so I can check to see did you do I have any questions that I have to answer. And uh, the homework, because I'm already going over the next stuff and the tests are happening. So you're better off getting that stuff done before the test. So that way you have an idea of what's happening on the test. Um, when is the first to, test? The first test is soon. Um, syllabus, calendar. Um, it's due the 19th of June, but it's gonna open up on Um, oh, it actually says it's already open. Um, oh well, uh, so it's already open. <laughs> I, will, uh, I don't think I'm able to see it. Hold on. Uh, it says available. Uh, I think if you go to home, 
Oh, I see. Let me go in a student view because I, 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 they, they finally put this in uh, like a little while ago. Um, right there. It says test one. Okay, because I, um, I understand like the frequency and the relative frequency and all that stuff, but there are certain things that I'm still confused about. But I haven't used the calculator first, so I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try it with the homework. Mm -hmm. And then I just want to make sure I have time to well, ask questions. You would have only done the stuff for chapter two so far, because test one is on chapters two, three, and four. Okay. So there's two whole chapters that you haven't even seen yet. Okay. I made it available. It's all all the stuff's available, so you can go in and do it if you want to do it ahead of time. Um, so if you're like, oh, I know I'm gonna be out like, you know, for a whole week, I'm going on vacation. You want to get it done ahead of time? Go ahead, get it done ahead of time. Um. So this year has all the dates, I'm guessing. I'm guessing it looks just like yours. I don't know. I don't see what you guys see. It's very weird. Like, this is supposedly what student view looks like, but I don't know. I have to take their word for it. So if you click on test one, what it does is it randomly pulls 25 questions from a, a, a test, blank, test bank. And the first, like, eight are chapter two, or let's say. I don't know. And then the next bunch of chapter three and then the next bunch of chapter four. So if you're like, oh, I know stuff from chapter two, you could go in and do chapter two and maybe it's the first six questions. So you can get that done and out of the way. And then you're like, I'll wait till chapter three happens. Oh, I get that. Go in and do chapter three. And you can, you know, you can do it in bits and pieces because each question gets three attempts. It's not like the, whole, the test has three attempts. Each question has three attempts. So as long as you don't submit it, <laughs> like the whole thing, it doesn't have a timer, so you can you know open it up, do some questions, submit that answer because it's each answer has its own thing. So you submit that answer, and then you can go on to the next one. If you're like, gee, I don't know, practice a, a, it gives you a practice problem right there. So you can test it out and go, all right, let me see how I do this before I do this one, and you know, it gives you the link to the book where it is in the book. Supposedly, come on. There it is. Here's the link in the book about that stuff. So all those things are in there. So you, some things like may not be exactly taken right from the the homework, but they, I mean, yes, they are, and no, they're not. Um, but what you'll have, like, so here, uh, this is talking about p of x and x times p of x, which is chapter three. Um, that seems weird. Oh no, this is. Yeah, this is probability. That's weird. Um, because we didn't really cover it in the homework. It's weird. Like they don't have all the stuff in the homework that they have on uh, that, that are in the questions. Um, but they're looking to. They're, this is a lot like. Um, oh, what does the column x times p of x sum up to? Well, you know that's going to be. Um, is there something missing for four? I don't even know. That's 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. Yeah, so it's missing a value here, so you have to figure out the, what that percentage is. And this is just the probability of those. But if you're like, gee, I don't know, you can click on this. You can, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it'll talk about it right here and how to do those pieces, and it'll show you exactly what it is you're supposed to do. Um, so talking about expected means and standard deviations, which is, um, and yeah, because chapter two is descriptive statistics. So I don't know, like they're, they're obviously not in order of things. So I, I don't know how that works. Um, I guess it randomizes the questions too. So, um, but if you're like, gee, I don't know how to do this, go on to the next one, you know, and you can just go on and you see ones that you're like, oh, I know how to do that. I know how to find the uh, standard deviation, all right, I can do this one. And then you can get some of them done and out of the way. So if you're like, gee, that, that's something I don't, it brings you to the book. You're like, that's chapter four. I haven't done that stuff yet. You wait. But it, it you know, it, then it's due like, so homework of chapter four is due on the 15th. We're going to cover chapter four on the 9th. The homework is due on the 15th and the test is due after that. So I try to make sure that the test is due after the homework is due. So you still have time to ask questions about the chapters that they're in and then uh, go on and take the test.
So, um, so that's what the, and this is what the calendar will say. We won't be here on the 30th, saw you, of June. Uh, we won't be, yeah. we won't have a class. Um, but, and then we won't have class during the 4th of July week. But then we okay. get right back up into it and, and do stuff. Okay? Okay. All right. So that's everything. So that's where no, the calendar I'm, is. What I'm saying, like what I'm saying, like I missed the class on the top of the fist. Yes. Fist. So you 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 missed this class. You didn't come in. That's fine. You don't have to come to the classes. Um, where it's just that I'm gonna do the stuff that I just did. If you miss it, just watch the video. You're like, gee, I don't know how to do. Like you may already get. You may get the stuff and go, oh, that's easy. I know how to do that. If you don't, oh, okay. I'm gonna go over all the homework type problems. And they're going to be in the recordings. Okay. So, and I will stop recording. Let's stop sharing, I think. Yep. And I will stop recording.